Hello friends and welcome to studytonight.com. Today in this video we will be talking about a very important programming concept known as the object oriented programming. Object oriented programming or OOP O O P is a widely used concept in programming and almost all the modern languages except C language follows OOP principle. It is a programming style that is associated with the concept of class, objects and various other concepts revolving around these two like inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, encapsulation, etc. If you're starting with C++ or Java or Python, you will soon be introduced to classes and in no time the word object will start following you like shadow. So before OOP, OOP starts to haunt you, it's better to know OOP so that when you first see its implementation, you embrace it with a smile. The objective of this video is to discuss and understand the concept of class, objects, inheritance, abstraction, encapsulation, and polymorphism. Let us try to understand a little about all these through a simple example. Human beings are living forms broadly categorized into two types, male and female, right? It's true. Every human being, male or female, have two legs, two hands, two eyes, one nose, one heart, etc. There are body parts that are common for male and female, but then there are some specific body parts present in a male which are not present in a female and some body parts present in female but not in males. Not getting into specifics here, but we know that a male and a female are different physically. Also, all human beings walk, eat, see, talk, hear, etc. Now again, both male and female perform some common functions, but there are some specifics to both, which is generally not valid for the other. For example, a female can give birth, while a male cannot. So this is only for the female. Human anatomy is interesting, isn't it? But let's see how all this is related to OOPS. Now, I will try to explain all the OOPS concept using this example and later we will have the technical definition for all these. First is class. Here in our example, we can take human being as a class. When gods would have decided to design humans, they must have had some basic set of features in their mind initially and then later on the concept of male and female would have hit them. Let's not get too mythical here. So basically a class is a blueprint with core features and functions set. Like human being, having body parts like legs and hands etc. and performing actions like walking, breathing, eating etc. Next is inheritance. Considering human being a class which has properties like hands, legs, eyes etc and functions like walk, talk, eat, see, etc. Male and female are also classes, but most of the properties and functions are included already in the human being class. Hence, they can inherit everything from the class human being using the concept of inheritance. So when we say a male and a female both inherit the class human being, we mean that as they have some common features which we have already implemented in the human being class. Hence, we do not have to implement them again in the male and female classes. They can simply inherit them from the class human being. So that is the concept of inheritance. Next is object. My name is Abhishek and I am an instance of class male because I am a male obviously. When we say human being, male or female, we just mean a kind. You, your friend, me, we are the forms of these classes. We have a physical existence while a class is just a logical definition. We are the objects. So male is a class of which I am an object, object with the name Abhishek. Next is the concept of abstraction. Abstraction means showcasing only the required things to the outside world while hiding the details. Continuing our example, human beings can talk, walk, hear, eat, but the details are hidden from the outside world. We can take our skin 
as the abstraction factor in our case, hiding the inside mechanism from the outside world. Then we have encapsulation. So the concept of encapsulation is a little tricky to explain with our example, but I will try. Our hands help us to hold things. Our legs are bound to help us walk. This binding of properties to functions is called encapsulation. Last but not least, polymorphism. So polymorphism is a concept which allows us to redefine the way something works by either changing how it is done or by changing the parts using which it is done. Both the ways have different terms for them. One is called overriding and the other one is called overloading. So let's see what overloading and overriding means. So if we walk using our hands, for example, we start walking using our hands and not our legs. Here we will change the part used to perform something, hence this is overloading. So when we have a function which has for example one argument and the function is operating on that argument and now for the same function we start taking a different argument. So this is called overloading where the arguments are changed, the number of argument or the type of the argument changes. Whereas overriding is a little bit different from this. If the defined way of walking, for example, everyone walks in the direction of their face. What if someone asks you to walk and you start walking backwards? So now you're walking, but you're walking differently. So this is overriding. When you change the mechanism of function, it is called overriding. So this is all about oops. I know it's too much to take in one go, but take your time, let the concept sink in. And we will also be covering all these concepts in individual videos so that you can understand everything in a better way. So stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe to our channel and wish you all a very, very happy new year. 